A popular production technique to make more interesting tracks is to use layering on certain parts to give them more character. The concept of layering is really very simple. For a given musical phrase, instead of recording that phrase using one and only one instrument or sound, you might re-record the same phrase two or three or more times using different sounds and then play them back together to create a more engaging scene. There are maybe dozens or more YouTube videos focused on layering drums, vocals, and melodies using DAWs or DAWs like Live. So I thought it was time to look at how easy it is to create layers on the black box. Oh, 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 oh. And I know what some of you are thinking. Won't layering cost me a ton of pads? Or like, how am I gonna fit a whole song in a preset if I start creating all these layered parts? Won't that use up all my pads? And the short answer is no, not if you do it the way I'm about to show you. So stick around and take a look. Okay. In the intro, we heard the loop that we're going to enhance with our layered part. Um, in just a sec, we'll go ahead and sample some sounds off the, the Micro Monster to, to make that layered part. But before we do, I want to just review what's going on in this preset. In terms of pads, we've got the hi-hat, bass drum, snare, samples. This lo-fi melody is a clip, which means it'll only play when the black box is in play mode. On the sequences side of things, I've got sequences for the drums. I've got, which is internal. You can see the drums are going now. Um, this sequence is uh, playing an external synth that's off camera. Okay, so that's the synth. Sequence 16 is our pattern that we're going to use to drive the Micro Monster to get our synth leads. It sounds a little something like this. Oh, the timing was so perfect. Right now, here we go. All right, I'm not gonna lie. Sounds pretty terrible. Um, but that's the point of the layering is that we're actually going to go from that to something that I think is actually listenable. So let's do it. First thing, um, I'm going to arm that sequence so that we're ready to play the Micro Monster again. Um, and then go back to pads where we are and prepare to record something. Uh, we need to check our gain. So I'm going to play it again. <laughs> All right, and it's pretty good because it's not peeking out in the red. It's, it's high enough, I think. So let's just grab that. I've got my length set to four bars. Um, so if I just hold down record and hit play, I'm going to get a perfectly timed four bar uh, recording of that pattern on this, on this patch. <laughs> So what I, now if we want to hear that, first thing I need to do is turn off the pattern so I'm not playing the synth anymore, and then come back. Now it recorded it as a clip, which I like, um, which means it's not going to play until I hit play. The other nice thing about a clip, um, I'm not going to get into the whole time stretching aspect, um, but it's quantized. So as opposed to a sample that plays right away, uh, a clip can be quantized so that it's gonna, you can tap it early and it'll launch on the beat very soft arguably too soft but the and let's spice this up a little with some delay and here's how I have the delay set up sync to a quarter note with 85% feedback 81 and a half percent feedback I don't know it's, it's a lot of feedback and it's not on the right, uh, it's not on the right pad. Here we go. That fills in a lot. Put a little bit of reverb. All right, 
right, now we got something. So I'm going to stop that. Let's get another recording. Uh, so I have another patch ready to go. Uh, now I have to just come back here, rearm the pattern, go to a new pad, and let's check the gain. It's still not uh, peaking, but it feels louder, but let's give it a shot. Record, play. All right, so you'll notice it doesn't sound anything like the first patch, which is what I want. I want contrast in my layer. Um, so in order to listen to it, again, let's turn off everything in sequences. Arm this guy. Okay, so now we got two sounds. Let's do one more. Uh, so I got set up another preset, um, ready to go there on the Micro Monster. Rearm our pattern, and now let's uh, let's just check the level. Here we go. Record. All right, that peaked a little. Let's see how it sounds. Turn everything off. So we're not going to play the synth again. We're just going to listen to the sound yet again. Okay, now let's see. Now we've got all three. Uh, let's see how this sounds. Arm the drums, arm the bass, arm the melody. Okay, cool. So now I promised you we weren't going to use up way too many pads to do this. So the last step in our layering is to use resampling um, to, to condense all three of these layers into one pad so that we can reclaim some of our space uh, in terms of our pads. Uh, the other nice thing about resampling these is that we won't have to use the live effects anymore. The live effects are going to be baked in to the resampled recording. So if you're concerned that you're using too much CPU on the black box, if you resample uh, the the effects, it's, it's just audio. It's not effects anymore. Then you can even dial in more reverb, more delay, and tweak the filter even more on that resampled bit. Um, another place to use resampling uh, if you really in a pinch with CPU is on granular uh, type samples, uh, you know, switch to granular, get the sound you want, resample it, and then play it back as a clipper sample. Anywho, um, let's see what's going on over here. Let's turn everything off. So th this fourth pad is going to be our, our complete three layer pad. So what I'm going to do is switch this to resample, and now let's check the gain. Oop, gotta actually turn these guys on. Do, do, do. Too high. Okay, so I'm gonna let 
all of this uh, this dwelling uh, effects fade. And once it's done, let's record it. Would probably help if I armed these guys again. Ready? <laughs> Okay, so now let's let's do it up. Boop, 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 boop. Now there's one thing, listen to this. Do you notice how it gets quiet? Each time it uh, returns back to the beginning or, or loops back to the beginning, it's dead quiet because the, uh, the reverb and the delay haven't started cooking up yet. Um, and that is because we started recording these three, um, these three samples or those three clips at the beginning. So you might want that. You might like how that sounds. But what if we wanted it all the way? We wanted reverb and delay effects. We wanted it full wet all the time. So in order to do that, um, let's let's start it playing first and let the effects bubble up let's let them get all wet and then um, start recording <laughs> So now we can hear the difference between those two if we want. Let's go. Now here's the first time with that dry start. It's subtle, but listen for it. It's totally quiet at the beginning, which is actually sort of cool now that I think about it. So it's a little a little fuller at the beginning because the effects are already in play. So that's, that's it, folks. Uh, what I could do now, just to, to prove the point, clear, clear, clear. I haven't decided which of these two I like better yet. Um, but we did a three-part layer, a three-layer part, um, and it's only using one pack. We got our layers by sampling three different patches off of the Micro Monster into the black box, and then we resampled those sounds in the black box after we dressed them up with some effects. Um, and I think I like how it sounds. I hope you like how it sounds. Uh, give this a try on your black box tracks. Um, see how it sounds and let me know.
That's it, everybody. I hope you like this. Like and subscribe, etc., etc. See you in the next one.